it says that he says, look, I came to tell you that your sheep was stolen or your cattle was stolen, but I was the only one that survived it. You know, I came to tell you your house burned up. But I escaped and came to tell you. I came to tell you that your sons and your daughters were drinking in one of the houses and it burned up and I was the only one that survived and I came to tell you. I mean, everything that Job had, he was lost. It was gone. Didn't have a single thing left to his name. He he literally was penniless. If you think about the old saying that I'm penniless, that's what people always say. My wife says it a lot. She goes, I'm penniless. But then when you realize that we still have, you know, 200, 300 bucks in our account, that might be going straight to bills and we're working, living the paycheck to paycheck, but we're not penniless. Job was actually penniless. If you think about it, he had zero. He had to start all over again from ground zero. Was penniless. Didn't have a dime to his name. Guess what? What's the first thing Job said? He says, look. He goes, he never once accused God for any wrongdoing. Never blamed him for anything. Or charged him for any wrongdoing. He basically said, God has the power to giveth. And God has the power to taketh. And there you go. So, God let the enemy, let Satan use Job in any way possible. You couldn't kill him, he said. And he took everything he could. He made sure everything was gone. His sons and daughters died. His cattle was gone. His crops burned. His grass burned. His his farm burned up. His house burned up. Gone. Everything. But guess what? He didn't say anything bad about God. He didn't curse God. didn't deny God. He said, I charge God with no wrong. So you know what? That is the only perfect person besides God himself that was perfect. Was God and Job. There's the most three people in this world that are absolute 100% perfect. Well, technically four, if you want to consider the Holy Spirit. God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, and Job were the four perfect people in this world. Because Job was up, sta- up right standing with God. He did not have a spot or a blemish on him. If you want to talk about the church of the end times, the perfect church without spot or blemish, that was Job. Job was that church. And he was perfect. There is nothing wrong or sinful in Job. He never committed sin, ever. Never, ever, ever. Now, his sons and daughters, I do believe, did. But Job himself never committed sin at all. And they're eating, drinking at the house, and they even died. So that just goes to show you that Job was absolute. And I learned that just the other day. I realized, I should say, didn't learn it. Because I knew the story of Job, how Job got everything taken from him, but never, ever, you know, denied God or whatnot, didn't, you know, charge God with any wrong. But I didn't realize that the very first of that entire scripture says that Job was upright standing with God, meaning he was perfect. And you can't get perf- any more perfect than Jesus, God, Jesus, and Job. So there you go, the three J's. Jehovah, Jesus, and Job. The three J's of the Bible. So who are the three perfect men in this world? The three J's of the Bible. Jehovah, Jesus and Job. So with that being said, let's get into a few for brief announcements. Or should I say two hour announcements? <laughs> excuse me for me, I gotta take me a drink. And I'm telling you guys, we do. Some days we have two hour announcements going on. And God speaks to us and we talk. But that is okay. That's what we're here for. We're here to talk. And that's what a podcast is. It's a talk radio podcast. It's a talk podcast, basically. It's just like listening to Mike Savage on the AM dial. If anybody know who he was, Michael Wiener Savage, one of my greatest radio hosts. I still listen to his podcast when I get a chance to, but he was a great radio host. And Michael Savage was just classic. But yeah, it's the same thing as talk radio. It's the same thing as like in Detroit, listening to WJR News Talk 950. Or other different talk shows like Sean Hannity and people like that. It's just a a radio program. But this is the same thing, but it's a podcast form. One day I want to do the history of 
the history of podcasting, starting off with radio. So with that being said, let's get into a few brief announcements. Number one, and I don't want to keep repeating this, but there are people out there who absolutely love this. Go to Community Cloud, 222 at gmail.com, spelled C-O-M-M-U-N-I-T-Y-C-L-O-U-D, 222 at gmail.com, and send me all of your prayer requests right to that email. Or if you just want me to shout out to you on the podcast, send me your first name, your city, and your state, and I'll shout out to you on TGIF, where Jesus does most definitely come first. And Chance, this is a shout out for you again from the Ravenna, Ohio area. I'm not exactly sure where you're from, but I met you in Ravenna. So this is this is a shout out to Chance from Ravenna, Ohio. Also, guys, you can call me at 1 302 448 Again, that's 1 302 448 TGIF. And if we're not doing something on the show at the moment, like if we're not uh, doing an actual show, well, if we're not talking and I'm not busy speaking about something or trying to elaborate on something that I'm like a message I'm giving out, and we are on the show and you want to get on the line and you want to be on this on, the, on a call with me real quick and you got a question or you got a suggestion or you might have uh, an answer to something that you think might fit too, feel free. Feel free to call me at 1-302-448-8443. Again, that's 1-302-448-TGIF where Jesus does most definitely and ultimately come first. Also, guys, be aware of we're doing it again this week. Worship Saturdays. We'll be doing nothing but worshiping God. Just praise, prayer, and worship. Now, Worship Saturdays, if I was to explain what Worship Saturdays was, it, 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 in the Christian era or sphere, it's just basically considered praise and worship music. It's worship to God. But in lamest terms, grab your favorite iced tea, grab your favorite whatever drink you'd like, your soda, your iced tea, if you want water, or if you got you know your flavor packets, whatever you use, whatever you use to chill on a nice hot day, grab your favorite drink, and yes, beer is okay. I, I drink beer every once in a while, so grab your favorite drink, your wine, whatever it is you're drinking, and just kick back in your lounge chair and do nothing but relax, chill, and enjoy the music. That's it. We just relax and chill on worship Saturdays. That's it. We don't do anything else. We don't do anything else but relax and chill. So with that being said, that's Worship Saturdays. Keep an eye out. Also, I want you to be aware for the four uh, outside of the classroom Wednesdays. Where we think outside of the classroom, outside of the classroom to everyone who needs the gospel each, excuse me, and every day. Again, it's outside the classroom Wednesdays. And here's basically what it is. I just basically uh, go and record my Bible study teacher at the... Uh, I record my Bible study teacher uh, during Sunday morning service at the Bible study class. And then I just play a piece of music at the beginning. It's just like a show. I, I do the announcement. The, the, uh, where's my train thought here, guys? I do the introduction song. The introduction I do the announcements, I do the music, piece of music. They go into the message that the Bible study teacher preached. And they play a selection of songs afterwards. So no matter what, guys, we always have music going on either during the Monday, the Saturday, or the Wednesday show. We'll always have music afterwards, a piece begin at the beginning, and then music afterwards as well. So you'll always have a fresh playlist playing after the fact as well. So Worship Saturdays, though, is my biggest worship day. It's just my busy, busy, biggest music day that I do. But any day you tune in after the message of either my Bible study teacher or the one that I preach from God will have music as well afterwards, depending on how much afterwards it is. Basically, depending on how long the message itself was. With that being said, I also want you to keep an eye out and be in prayer for the Rumble. Now, the Rumble, base, basically this. Back in the day when boxers used to box number one, they used to what? Rumble. It was they got into a boxing ring and they used to beat each other up. 
That's what a rumble is. It's a boxing match back in the 20s and 30s. But the but a boxing match is they fight each other. And the Bible says that we don't fight or what? Rumble against flesh and blood, but of principalities of darkness and evil. So we're, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take one day out of the week, preferably at midnight, and do nothing but pray, pray, pray. Fight, 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 rumble, rumble, rumble. Now, why do I say preferably at midnight? Because that's when all darkness or evil comes out. Evil, darkness loves darkness. Think about this. You, you're in a dark room. Can you, If you're in a pitch dark room, can you see a hand in front of your face? Of course not. Why is that? Because every little piece of darkness is collected into that room. So all darkness is there. But when you start flipping on night lights, you can start seeing things in the room, like your hand or your table or whatnot. Why? Because you're illuminating the darkness with light. It's the same thing with Jesus. To find when all the lights are turned on, all the darkness is gone. Same thing with Jesus. If you pray for something in the name of Jesus, demons tremble and Satan has to flee. The Bible says Satan has to flee. So darkness does get dispelled and has to flee out of that area. Why? Because you're displaying God's light. Same thing. So we're going to take one day out of the week, and what we're going to do, we're going to pray for you. We're going to pray for you, the listener. If you got a prayer request, go to communitycloud222 at gmail.com, spelled C-O-M-M-U-N-I-T-Y-C-L-O-U-D, 222 at com. Also, guys, call us at one 302 Again, that's one 302 T-G-I-F, whether it's in the email or it's on the phone call, or the voicemail, I should say, if you leave one, on the email itself, <clears throat> in the subject, <coughs> sorry guys, in the subject, put uh, put prayer request, or in the email, leave the note that you want a prayer request, and then in the actual email itself, let me know what your prayer request is, and as well with the, as well with the, what's what's the word I'm looking for? With the phone call and the voicemail, if you leave one, or if you get live on the show, if we're live, with the voicemail as well. Just say you want a prayer request and what your prayer request is in the voicemail, and that's it. So what we're going to do, we're going to pray for you. We're going to pray for the president, whoever the president may be the government, and I don't care if I don't like the guy or do like the guy, we're still going to pray for him. We're going to pray for the government, we're going to pray for everything and anything. You name it, we'll pray for it. And we'll pray for the show, we'll pray for us as well. So let's pray for the president real quick. Lord, we humbly come back before you again today, Lord, to pray for this this man of this man in the White House, this man who we call President, President Joe Biden. Lord, I, I, I'm not going to be a liar and say that I absolutely love our president. I'm going to say, Lord, that I think, and I think, and this is just my opinion, Lord, whatever you say is different, but I do believe that President Donald Trump was our best president we've had in forever. But Lord, with all that being put aside, with all my emotions put aside, how I don't like what's going on with this presidency, Lord, I still want to come before you and pray for him. I want you to guide him and direct him, Lord. Direct him into all things that are good. Direct him into everything you want him to do. What you don't want him to do, let him know. And whatever else is going on in this government, Lord, protect him and protect them and protect our our rights and our amendments that we have so that we, Lord, can be worshipers of you, Lord, because we in this country are free to worship God how we choose to. And we want to leave that freedom there. We don't want that freedom to be gone away with the rest of our rights, like the right to bear arms, Lord, and the right to freedom of speech. And if those rights go away, Lord, what rights and freedoms do we have anymore? Nothing. And the government will just push you to the side and not allow you to be in this world no more, Lord. Don't get me wrong, you'll still be here. We'll have to go and have to preach about you anyways and talk about you anyways. But Lord, we want you to be front and center of this nation. 
front and center of this world so we can say, Lord, we loved you, we honored you, we worshiped you.